What's up YouTube, it's JB Tech Fanatic. I'm back again with another video. As always, I'd like to start this video by thanking each of you for joining me today. If you have not yet subscribed, remember it's completely free to do so. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click the notifications to on. Welcome to part one on the all new Samsung Q90T. This will be a several part series, which I hope to cover all aspects that you would wanna know about this beautiful TV by Samsung. Now, if you followed my channel over the last few years, you know that the Q9 is one of my favorite TVs. The television that I bought in 2018 is still working great and I actually love that TV. I'm very excited about this television and I wanted to point out that this, I believe, is a year that we start to see things really start to shift to 8K. The reason why I say that, if you look at the QLED series from the Q6, 7, 8, and 9, you noticed, one, the price dropped substantially, including on the Q9, it's roughly $1,000 less than the 2018 model was. But what I've noticed is that they really have started to separate their 8K TVs to be their top end line. Now, again, the Q9 is the best 4K TV that um, Samsung sells. So I'm excited about it. It's got features we know and love and some new and improved features. And we'll talk about all of those and more. I look forward to doing this. Let's get started. Okay, we got it all pulled out here. Just wanna make a note, it does not come with an HDMI cable. You get the power cord, two AA batteries, your one remote, your user manual, um, and then of course your quick setup guide. Back there we have the stand, be prepared, that is extremely heavy. Um, and then we have sort of the plastic kit for it. We'll put that together in a moment. I want you to keep in mind that the two white panels on the side are also followed by a screen protector. Do not take those off until the TV is fully set up. That protects your screen. And then of course, don't forget to take that screen protector off so you get the best quality. All right, we're gonna put the stand on. What you're gonna wanna do is line these up and snap this into place. Got a total of four screws. Tighten them, but do not over tighten them. So this is nice and tight. Next thing you want to do, put this on a very soft surface face down. This is very heavy and you don't want it to pull, but you're going to just simply put this onto its clips. And then once it lays flush, you're going to run the four screws right in the top here. Since we're doing setup, I wanted to talk about the HDMI ports. Now, again, we talked about there's four HDMIs in total. You have the LAN, EX link and the antenna in. And then of course you have two USB ports and an optical. HDMI 3 is an eARC and HDMI 4 is a true 2.1 HDMI input. Gamers, this is very important. Definitely you're gonna wanna get yourself a 2.1 HDMI cable. Then you will be able to achieve 4K at 120 Hertz. Followed my channel, you know I'm all about high quality HDMI cables. Typically, I do not trust um, online manufacturers. I just happened to come across this one um, on accident. Um, it's a San Francisco based company. They have all different versions, but this is a true 2.1 HDMI cable. It is just beautiful, good quality and gamers, you definitely want this because remember, you can get a 9.8 millisecond input lag. Um, of course, you have FreeSync on board. This is a true gamers television and with 2.1 now built in, you definitely wanna upgrade at least the eARC cable and the uh, gaming cable. All right, this is the best feeling, peeling off that screen protector. Don't worry about the screen. You can kind of see it pull back, but as you take this off, you will see how much clearer and cleaner the screen looks. Please download the SmartThings app on your mobile to start TV setup. Right button to set up the TV with the TV remote. 
As you heard, it's now time to set up your TV. There's two ways to do that with the Samsung SmartThings app with your phone or with the remote. To use the Samsung SmartThings app, you simply would download the app. Once it's downloaded, you would simply I have a, several TVs with them. Sorry, it might even pop up at the top, but you would just hit the plus sign, press device, go to Samsung and then simply hit TV and it will lead you through all the settings. We are going to do it with the remote. So go ahead and grab your remote and hit, press the right button, excuse me. As you can see, this is one of the most important parts. All the items you wanna use with this television need to be turned on. And this is because your one remote will control all of them. As you can see here, we have connected across the board and it's green so you know that you are set if it's red make sure that it's plugged in and powered on and connected properly go ahead and connect to the internet go ahead and agree to all if you do not have a samsung account i recommend that you get one and sign in also if you have a samsung tv and you have some of their appliances and you do not have a Samsung smartphone, it might be something worth looking into because there's so many great features that you only get with Samsung to Samsung. Once you're signed in, you will now have your choice whether you want to use Bixby or Amazon Alexa. Go ahead and choose which one you'd like. I won't bore you with this part, but whatever voice assistant you choose, be sure to do the voice setup. It will help so much, especially with it recognizing what you want it to do. Once that's complete, Samsung has the backup data feature, which this is great. If you own another television by Samsung or you're replacing one, it will automatically restore your television how you left it. So you could choose whether or not to do this, Let's go to the next one. Go ahead and input your zip code. Now it will show you what is paired and what you can use with your smart remote. If you have a cable box, or in this case I have dish, make sure that you're pointing the one remote while this is happening. What this is gonna do is let your remote control the box. Next, if you want to use Prime Video, you would go ahead and select. Now go ahead and select any of the ones you want out of this menu. You can also do this later and have more um, things to choose from in the App Store. This is all about preference. I mean, if you like your television to make choices for you, you definitely want to use this. If not, don't check the box. I will say that this definitely helps with, you know, enhancing the acoustics, um, you know, it analyzes the environment. So if you have a fan going as an example, it will amplify the voice for you um, so that sound isn't drowned out. I actually like it. Normally, I'm not someone that likes this sort of thing, but give it a try. This is one of those features I was talking about you would get if you have a Samsung device and it is so cool. It's called Tap View. You can actually utilize a split screen format, example, watching TV on the left and then actually seeing what you're doing on your phone on the right. It's just something that's really cool. You don't have to activate it, but if you want to go ahead and do so. Go ahead and test your remote by pressing volume up and down and the same with the channel. Now you simply press start watching and we're ready to move on. First things you want to do after you're able to start watching. Go ahead and grab your remote, press the menu button and let's go on over to settings. Now in settings, there's several things I recommend doing right when you get your television up and running. First, you wanna go down to general. Now, we talked about intelligent settings as far as if you want those or not, you can choose to turn that on and off right here. You can recalibrate your voice and set the voice wake up. Of course, if you need to fix your network connection, you can do that here. 
you have your system manager, your external device manager is where we first want to start. Go ahead, go into there, make sure HDMI CEC is clicked on. And as you can see here, it says input signal plus. Now go ahead and make sure that all of these are turned on. This is going to let you take advantage of the newest uh, HDMI standards. It should give you a much better vivid picture as well as unlocking your gaming features. So once all of these are on, we're gonna go out here. And if you see here, we also, while we're here, HDMI black level is kind of out. That's because I'm in the demo mode so you can see the video, but you want that to be on low whenever possible. So this is already done for us. If you wanna connect any Bluetooth devices, keyboard, mouse, you can do this under the input device manager. And then of course you have the connect manager here. All right, next, go to Eco Solution. This is a big one. I shut everything off. I don't like when it dims my TV way down, but you can decide to do that. If you turn it on, you can set a minimum brightness, um, power saving mode, I leave that off, motion lighting off. The only thing that I leave on is, I put it to four hours. If the television's not being used, it will shut itself off. Other than that, shut everything off. Next thing I do is accessibility menu. Now, a lot of people ask me how to do this, and that's to turn this black, you turn high contrast. As soon as you do that, you will get it into the black color that most of you seek. I also want to point out that they did give us picture off. I love this feature. They took it away for a long time. This is, you know, if you're listening to audio and you don't want to be using your TV, you can actually have the audio going and the picture off. Great for example, if you want to watch a YouTube listening to music and you don't want to watch it, go ahead and use that feature. Hopefully that made sense. Also, if you're, you know, wanting things to be bigger so you can see them better, you can actually do that in this menu. Also, you have your caption settings, your multi audio output, all together in one place. Smart features. Now, this is something that you might or might not want. What I mean by that is, if you're not gonna use the smart features, you might not want the hub to pop up or your television to load it every time. You can actually shut off the smart hub if you would like. Go ahead and uncheck this, and then also uncheck last app. Now, of course, I use it, and so you know, if you want it to automatically pick up where you left off on an app, go ahead and turn auto run last uh, um, app to on. That was a mouthful, sorry. Auto run last app on. So go ahead and make sure these are both on if you plan on using your smart hub. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna know that you have the latest software. So go down to support, go to software update. And as soon as you do that, hit update now and it will check for you. Next, go up to sound, go to sound output. Now, depending on how you have this running, whether you use HDMI arc or maybe use optical, you'll have different choices right up here and you can pick. Also, if you want to add a Bluetooth speaker or headphones, you can do that here. But with anything, whether you use optical or HDMI, you want to go down to expert settings. You want to go ahead, turn on HDMI eARC mode. If you have something, you know, you could just leave it on auto, which is nice. Um, put the output audio auto also. And what you want to do here on the digital output audio delay is turn this completely down to zero. If you are using an Atmos product, you want to go ahead and turn that on right here. And also, if you do not like your television making noise when you go through the menu, you can turn off sound feedback here or turn it up if you like it and want it louder. Again, remember, check out part two. I'll be, you know, doing much more in depth picture settings, I want to just show you what's available. 
you have dynamic standard natural movie retail bright and retail dark that is available just because i'm in retail mode as far as your settings menu now these are not my settings right now i'm just giving you a look at it you have brightness contrast sharpness color tint this is where if you want it for different sources, meaning HDMI one, two, or three, you can set it to all sources or just the current source, which is great if you want different settings for say your Xbox versus um, your dish box. Um, picture clarity, this is the auto motion settings. Um, I can tell you right away that I normally say shut this off. It really does a great job on auto of not using it when it's not needed so you don't get that soap opera effect. Um, your local dimming, contrast enhancer, your color tone is all on deck. Instead of having, see this shadow detail here, on all, or not all, but a lot of the older model Samsung, if we go back up top, usually you would have two different brightness settings at the top. They basically just move that second one down to the bottom and they call it shadow detail. Also keep in mind gamma, white balance, these will all be available depending on if the source is compatible with adjustments. I love the fact that you can pick each component. Example, you can see my dish network. Now with the one remote, doesn't look like it can do much, but what happens is, as you can see, I can do anything with my one remote that I can do with my dish remote because the one remote was able to um, sync itself with dish. And what it does is it utilizes that and lets you use your one remote and have all the features that you know your standard rem standard remotes would have, which is a great thing. Um, also, if you're into the Samsung TV Plus, you can kind of incorporate everything in one place. Honestly, I've never been a fan of that, but it's there if you like it. Have our quick settings, and you basically just have some quick toggles. If you ever need help, you have your manual built in, intelligent mode, of course, uh, easy game mode. As you can see, we have free sync HDR. Um, and then also, if you keep scrolling over, you can see how you're connected to the internet, and then you can turn game mode to permanently on, or you can put it to auto, or you can turn it off. And then of course, quick toggles for your color tones, your audio output, and then of course your device care. Really easy to get to and really quick to turn on and off. We have our app store. It's just like a phone. When you click on it, there's all kinds of cool apps that you can download and most of them are free, which is always a good thing. Also, we have a very useful search bar. Simply search anything you're looking for really quick and easy. If you want to know exactly what is coming in, go to your source, go ahead and click. I'll show you here. If we hit Xbox up on the top, you will see that HDR UHD. That's a great thing to know exactly. If you're looking for 4K, make sure you're getting it. One of the features that my wife absolutely loves is the ambient mode. Ambient mode you know, when it was first introduced, it was just about, you know, making your television into art. You still have the ability to do that, which is awesome. They added new features like music wall, um, relaxation, mood. So basically they're showing you relaxing content and playing soothing sounds. And then of course, everything is very customizable. You even have routines where you can set it up for the morning before work or before bed. But as you can see, there's so much to play with. Um, you can upload photos from your own phone so you can actually do different um, arrangements of your family and have those on your TV. And another really cool feature is you can have it turn on when you're in a certain proximity to your television with your phone. So it will just turn on and then shut off on its own. This is a great, great feature. Another feature that they really advanced is the game mode. Now I showed you how to toggle it on and off, but they added a couple things. So we have dynamic black equalizer 
and we have surround sound. So enjoy intelligent scene-based 3D surround sound for highly immersive gameplay. I will say as far as televisions go, the QLED is one of the best, especially the Q9 or of course the 8K series. As far as the audio goes, it has object tracking sound, active voice amplifier, and has Dolby Digital Plus. So right out of the box, you get 60 watts with the ability of 4.2.2 channels. That's not bad for a built-in audio. Also, it does have the industry certifications for CTA 4K Ultra HD Connected and HDR10+. It is also compatible with the mini wall mount and it is also Versa wall mount compatible. It does not work, by the way, with the studio stand, kind of a bummer. Other than that, the weight of the product is 44.3 pounds without stand and 53.8 pounds with stand for a total shipping weight of 68.3. Also, it does work with Google. It's not built in, but it does work with Google. And then of course you have Bixby and Alexa, um, ultra black, eco sensor built in. It does support multi-link and it does support Bluetooth headsets. And the Bluetooth version is 4.2. That sums up part one on the all new Samsung Q9 OT. Remember to check out part two when it's available. You'll be able to click the card above. And until then, don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications to on so you know when the latest videos are available. As always, I like to slow things down for a moment and remind you, life is so short. Don't forget to love your family, love your neighbors, take care of each other. You know, the world is a mess right now and the only people that can change it is you and I. It's amazing how a small act of kindness can go such a long ways. I also want to remind you, I do YouTube for you and you only. So if you need me, you could reach me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at JB Tech Fanatic. And of course, you can reach me at any time in the comment section. I look forward to helping you as best as I can. I want to say thank you one last time. Tell you all to stay safe out there. I can't wait to talk to you in the comments and see you in the next video. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic and I'm out. Peace.